It's no secret most TVs are ugly. Lots of design-minded people don't want one in a living room because it's a giant black hole in an otherwise chic or colorful space. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com, and Samsung's designers and engineers have solved this problem with the Frame TV. Samsung's Frame TV is made to look just like a painting or art when it's turned off, hiding a high-quality, high-resolution 4K TV that sparks to life with the click of a button. I first reviewed the Frame TV back in 2017, and that review has over a million views now. Clearly, a lot of you are interested in this television. Now that Samsung's launched a brand new 2021 Frame TV version, I thought it was high time to get another look at the Frame. In this all new review, I will look at what the video quality is like, what the special art mode and new gallery mode features are all about, and what differentiates those two features from each other. Plus, we'll touch on how to install the TV using the special no-gap wall mount, since I did it myself this time. I'll also note any differences and upgrades from the original Frame TV 2, since there are a few new features like multi-view. An early heads up, if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful, to please hit that like button and do consider subscribing. Both help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there gets to watch, enjoy, and learn from. One of the most noticeable differences is that the 2021 Frame TV is half as deep or as thick as the original. It measures just one inch thick off the wall. I also opted to purchase extra detachable magnetic white frames to hide the black bezel of the TV and to help it to blend into my space better. There are lots of other colors and styles available too, but I went for the white modern frame. It does appear that older frame TV magnetic frames will not fit on the newer, thinner TVs, in case you're wondering. In order for this TV to believably pose as a painting when it's not showing video, it needs to be properly installed, and in my opinion, that means wall mounting it. There are feet that come with the frame, just in case, but I've already put them away in a drawer and you should do the same. The wall mount is significantly different from the original too. Here, two hinged metal loops will attach to the TV, then slide right into a completely flat two-piece bracket system that affixes to the wall. The previous version tucked into a recessed panel behind the TV and articulated out a little bit. With this one, you need to measure perfectly and install it exactly where you need it because there's really no adjusting it. I'd say it took us about an hour to install it and in all honesty, much of that was measuring, finding studs and double checking. The instructions are pretty easy to follow and it's not hard to do overall, but it did take time to get it right. If you want to see how it's done, you can check out my video about how we installed the Frame TV that's right here on the channel. Another cool aspect of the Frame TV is the Samsung One Connect box and invisible connection, which means you'll see virtually nothing when it comes to cords and cables. The One Connect box is available on other Samsung TVs, but with the frame, in my opinion, it is absolutely essential. The clean lines of this TV really need not to be cluttered up with dangling cords and twisted cables. For that reason, there are no ports in the TV itself. You must use the One Connect box. You can either hide the One Connect cable in the wall, which we did, or run it carefully underneath the TV. The box doesn't need line of sight, so you can hide that anywhere. In the back of the One Connect box, there's lots of connection options, including four HDMI ports, including an audio return channel, plus optical digital audio and LAN and cable. You might not need to connect much though, since most popular streaming services are available right on the TV interface. Let's get to the important stuff here. Now, while 4K video resolution on this TV is important, it's probably not the primary reason you're looking at the frame, so I'm going to start with the standout features, including art and ambient mode. And this TV, unlike some others, has both of these features. Art mode is what sets this TV apart from pretty much all other televisions. When the TV's not displaying video, you can have it show art mode where you get ultra high quality, high resolution art prints or photography. The light in this TV is designed so that when it displays that art, it doesn't glare or flare, so it's really possible to think this is just a picture hanging on your wall. 
there's a coating on the screen to keep reflections way down. So even when you're standing in front of the art, it looks legitimately like a painting or artwork that's behind glass. A built-in light sensor adjusts the screen's output constantly so that the art is always visible in its best light. If you've got sunlight streaming in, the art looks realistic but brighter. When nighttime rolls around, you won't get glare. It'll adapt to a dimmed version that still looks like it fits in with the rest of the room. You can also enable the motion sensor, and this will let the screen respond to movement in the room, flicking the TV on to art mode when it senses someone nearby, but otherwise it'll turn the TV fully off, leaving a blank screen to save energy. Now you can set this turn off time to be as long or as short as you like. I actually found this feature was really responsive. There was virtually no delay from me walking into the room and the TV returning to active art mode. I hardly ever noticed a dark screen. And much like real art, you can customize it, add a mat, and even change the color of the mat easily on the TV or inside the app. Unlike some other competing TVs, with the frame, you can add your own art and photos or even download ultra high definition or 4K videos or artwork from other third-party websites. You'll upload your own photos using the Samsung Smart Things app. Now, unfortunately, the app kept crashing on my phone, so I was unable to add any of my own stuff. New with the Frame 2021 version is the addition of Ambient Mode. While the previous Frame had only still or static art when I reviewed it, other Samsung TVs, including ones I've reviewed here on the channel before, also have what's called ambient mode. Ambient mode is another version of art on your TV, but in this case, it's often moving art or graphic art. And it even goes a little bit further in that it can show you weather information, or you can take a photo of your wall or the wallpaper and have the TV use that to make it completely vanish into your space. There are a lot of different ambient options available. When I last sampled the frame's art through the original TV, there was quite a bit of free artwork, but now Samsung really wants you to pay to an art subscription. You can choose to pay a monthly fee, which is about seven bucks a month, or go for the annual membership at about $80 Canadian. You can also buy individual works at about 27 bucks a piece. With all the amazing art here to help the TV hide in plain sight and blend seamlessly into a room, it's easy to forget the frame is also a high quality 4K TV. We watched movies on it, TV series and sports too. The 4K resolution is clear, stunning, and the level of detail is really impressive. Controlling your Samsung Frame TV is easy and you can do it in two ways. It comes with a small remote control or you can use your smartphone. The Samsung One remote has just a handful of buttons. You can control tasks like playing and pausing and power with a touch. The remote also has voice control built in. 4K nature videos on YouTube. Just ask for what you want from changing the channel to channel 10 to finding content on YouTube. You can use the built-in voice assistant or choose Google Assistant, which I did. The remote also has what's called ambient light charging. So this is actually called the solar cell remote, I think, which is a whole new thing for me. On the back here, and I don't know how well you guys will be able to see it, uh, on the back is a small light sensitive panel. It charges the remote using indoor light. You can also charge it with a USB-C cord. A full charge should last for about two years. Now, naturally, I haven't had the TV here enough time to test out that battery duration, but I'm keeping track. Your smartphone can also be the remote for your TV. Download the Samsung SmartThings app and pair it up for handy control over the set. I will say the app, again, is extremely buggy on both my iPhone and my iPad, and it crashes constantly. Um, honestly, it crashes pretty much every time I use it, so it has been extremely frustrating. I do hope there's an update for it soon, but for right now, trying to surf artwork options is impossible. Uh, impossible on the app on an iPhone anyway, so Apple users, you've been warned. The new 2021 Samsung Frame now has a feature called Multiview. Multiview lets you watch what's on the Frame TV and your mobile on the same screen at the same time, or you can show two different HDMI sources or even toss YouTube into the mix. The screen sizes and configurations are fully adjustable too. This feature worked amazingly well, though it is a bit odd to get it set up and to make those adjustments. You can watch my other video, How to Set Up and Use Multiview, right here on the channel. 
You can listen to music on the frame and there's a couple ways to do it. You can get a few music streaming apps right there. I was able to use Apple Music and Spotify. You can also use Bluetooth from your phone to the TV, but I found this super finicky and it didn't work for me most of the time. Plus, you can't play the music while art mode is on. For me, this may be the biggest downside of the Frame TV. I really wish I could listen to my own music on the Frame and set art or ambient mode to appear on the screen, but I can't get it to work at all. If you've found a way to do this, I would love to hear more about how in comments below. In another really cool upgrade here on the 2021 Frame TV, you can do screen mirroring, airplay, or otherwise share the screen of your laptop, phone, or computer. There's a few different options and it works for both Apple and PC. Overall, there is a lot to love about the 2021 Frame TV and quite a few improvements in this version. The art mode is amazing, and now with the addition of ambient mode 2, this is a majorly versatile art showpiece, whether you want still imagery or some motion. The fact that it's also a deliciously detailed 4K TV is the cherry and the chocolate sauce on an already amazing Sunday. It goes without saying the 4K picture is stunning and realistic, and with HDR support for more accurate color representation and high-end light replication, there's just nothing bad to say about the picture. Some folks have asked if I was noticing any burn-in, and I can definitely say that in the three or four weeks that I've been testing this TV, I have not noticed that. In my opinion, it would take far longer use for that to become noticeable. I will keep an eye on it, however, and hopefully do an update video, maybe sometime in the next year or so to let you guys know. I think the TV, though, is responsive and it switches quickly between modes. The fact that it has smart capabilities and streaming built in means you don't need to add anything else unless you want to. Even the basic speaker in the TV is pretty good, but I did add my Sonos Beam soundbar to the mix. I love the multi-view feature and found that works extremely well to display both my social feeds via my phone and the TV content as well. When it comes to the downsides, the Samsung SmartThings app is extraordinarily buggy and crashes constantly on my iPhone. I've essentially given up on using it until there's an update. The other major downside, since we're talking about downsides, is that you can't choose your own music to play over art or ambient mode. Overall, I think the 2021 Samsung Frame TV is pretty much the best TV on the market, especially for folks who want a set in their main living space and need it to blend in. The 55-inch Samsung Frame TV cost me about $1,500 Canadian, but prices do vary. If you want to read this review or reference any of what I've talked about, head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've got a full write-up posted. You can ask me any questions you have about the Frame TV, either there on the blog or, as always, here on the YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Erin. Until the next time, you can find me on either Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always catch me through Facebook at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.